As you can see, the cameraman is kind of bored. Hello, and welcome to Agnieszka Making Things. Today we'll be making a custom Funko Pop. So first you need uh, the Funko base. And I, I recommend getting ones with the proper hair you want. I, I chose this one because it doesn't have any hair, and so I can make my own hair for it. Next we need these paint markers for the decals of the Funko Pop. And then paint brushes, of course, to paint it. The varnish on, to paint it on top so the paint doesn't, doesn't scratch off. I recommend matte paints. They, they, they are, are also pretty strong and they have nice texture to them. Then we need the, the paint for the base before we paint the colors. And then we have the Sculpty um, clay that I like to use. It's very stable. And these wire clippers for cutting off the unnecessary bits of the Funko Pop. I recommend first making a sketch of what, what Funko Pop you wanna make, just so it'd be easier for you to ma make it on the spot. And so we start with cutting off the limbs. Yeah. So we got the first leg off. We want to cut it at the base of the chest because then it, it have more room to make our own legs. Our own form. Okay. We don't need the lightning. That's why we have to cut it off. But it's much easier than sawing it off. So I used to saw it off and it'd be painful every single time. But now this is much easier. Make sure to do this over some kind of sink or paper so it'd be easy to clean. Make sure not to cut off your fingers. I think we're good. Now with everything cut off, we are gonna have to make arms and legs first off before making the clothing. So first you have to work the clay and then you have to put it in long strands to make the arms and legs. My style is making the arms noodly so they kind of look cute, but it's up to you if you want to make the decals for the hands. Right now we're making noodles and I recommend using this kind of knife. You you can find these at most craft stores, and they're very 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 good to use because they they can cut really well in the smallest spaces. So now we have these arms and legs. So the arms have to be a bit like thinner than the legs, like that. These tips will be for the hands. So about that length. Make sure they're the same length. Maybe now you have to check if they're not too long. They're, they are too long. All right. Hmm. You can always test it. Just kind of mold it on. You can always squish it a bit. One's a bit longer than the other one, so it's fine if you just mold it into place. Alright, looks like we have the hands done. First put them in this kind of position before you you put them in the position you want the Funko Pop to be. Because then you're going to have to put on the clothes. Once you put on the clothes, then you'll be able to put it in the position you want. Now the legs. Again, you cut it. Make sure they're a bit thicker than the arms. Just so it can stand properly. It's a bit too long. You don't want the Funko Pop to be too big because then it might not fit in the box. I think this is a good height. 
just mold it on just like the hands. And you don't want them stuck together at first. I think this is just about the height that I want it to be. All right, now you use a knife to make sure the arm isn't, the shoulder isn't stuck to the head. All right, I think we're good on the arms and legs now. Make sure they're in place, they don't fall off. And there you go, there are the arms and legs. Now with the spare clay that you get from after doing the arms and legs, you're gonna have to mold and sew ball, flatten it to make the fabric of the clothing. It's gonna have to be thin, but not too thin. This is when the knife comes really in handy. Make it a bit more square. Now I think I'll do the hmm, the the pants first. So at first you're, you're gonna have to make it out. I like the the edge that the knife cuts. There you go. Now you're gonna have to measure it. It's a bit. You're just gonna have to fit it. Just make it not too high, or else it will affect the other, the hoodie or the shirt you want. Also, make it not too, pants not too baggy, unless you want baggy pants. All right, so I cut it. I'm, I'm gonna do this to meet the ends. If it doesn't meet the end, you're gonna need more clay, but it's fine. thing is with clay is that you can redo it many times if if it's not dry of course I'm gonna do the other pants before I fix this make sure it's the same length mm, flatten this out a bit Okay. Haven't done this in a while. <laughs> Here we go. See the knife is so useful. It's the only it's the only real tool you'll ever need for this stuff. Oh, it looks like one leg end up longer than the other, just squish it back in. You can always, if it's too thick, you can always cut it like that and then round it. Pants are close to done. So now you want to straighten them a little bit more like this rather than splayed out. I 
there are your lines, your pants. I've noticed that there are a lot of ceases here, so I use this kind of tool. I don't know what it's called, but it's kind of smooths it out. It's very useful. And so, we'll start on the, the hoodie. So now, once again, you're, you're gonna have to take the clay, the leftovers from the pants. There might not be enough clay um, in here for the, the top, but you can always add more. And once again, flatten it out. Don't use don't do the sleeves first. Do the do the front. Once again, measure it. It's it doesn't have to be exact. Kind of do that, and and then since it's a hoodie, doesn't really have mm, kind of. Mm, could I use that? Though? There we go. Don't want it too long, just like that. Once again, make sure it doesn't stick to the head, because then that, that would just look weird. And don't scratch the head either, because then it might leave marks. Round it up. So that's the front, and then do the back. Flatten it out. Just do the same as you did with the front. Make sure you don't cut yourself. This hoodie doesn't have an, a hood, so I won't add that, but if you want to add a hood, go ahead. You want to connect these two together, can mold it. Of course I can use this, kind of smooth out the seasons. Legs kind of look short, so make them a bit longer. That's the magic thing about clay, you can fix it. Now we have to make sure it doesn't stick to the head.
sure it isn't too rigid too. Okay, it looks about good. The hair will cover that part anyways. And that's your shirt without the sleeves. Once again, you take the leftovers to make this, I think, will be enough to make one sleeve and I can just get more. You'll, you'll have to measure it. It's a bit too long. Unless you want oversized sleeves, then that's, that's your choice. Mm. Still a bit too long. Start at the bottom. Stretch it a bit. See, there's a bit missing here. I have to take a bit more. Hold it into place. Roll it around a bit. Get it smoother. Irregular here, so I'll just there we go. There's one sleeve. Looks like we might have enough for the second sleeve. It's too too long. It's better. Okay. Roll it up again, and then flatten it. By the way, this is bake clay. It isn't normal clay. Because then it would just dry out. And that wouldn't be fun. This takes a while. That one much smoother. Make sure they're the same length. The shape is kind of not normal. All right. And you have to make sure it doesn't stick. Pull it out. All right, here we go. The hoodie's done. Looks like we have enough clay for now the shoes. The hair always goes last because it's on top of the clothing. That'll make it's like a bit. Hmm. Don't 
make it too big. And also decide on what position you want your legs. It's too small. Kind of not normal, but I promise you it will work. I want the position. All right, those are the shoes. Now we take out new clay. We're gonna need it for the hair. Take a slab, I think it'll be enough. We're gonna have to get together. Uh, this is why it's a good idea to do this over some paper or a sink, but then you can always take the extra that fell off. You could always use your brother to mold the clay. Just twist it. <laughs> He's always the best one to go to, to, to work the clay. Now we're gonna make the hair, but first we have to cover like this part of the head before we start making the details for the hair. Unless you want um, it bald, then go ahead. But we roll it up and flatten it out, just like the last clothing. I'm sure it's a bit big. Now you kind of want to cut it as a circle. Oops, sorry. Um, say about. It's pretty big to cover the whole head. You want it thin too. Make sure there are no holes in it. So from here. Go. If there are any holes popping up, you just pat it down. to use more for this. You can just cut pieces like this. Go. Just mold it into place. That's how simple clay is. So not to do that either. Kind of looks like a helmet. All 
All right, I think we're ready for that hair. Have to roll it up again. Now this is gonna depend, this step is gonna depend on what kind of hair you want. Whether you want it short or long. It's, it's gonna have to depend on who you're making. We're all gonna we're also gonna have to make a dog. You also have to decide on what the, you want the Funko Pop to be holding or wearing, like a backpack or some kind of bag, or what you want it to be sitting on. You can always put in the sitting position. No, that's why I like the knife because I can easily cut the curve. the first curl. The thickness is perfect. Depends on if you want thick hair or thin hair. This is where drawing is coming. They're, they're very useful during this part. I promise you I'm painting it over. So it, it won't it, it usually at the um, before you bake it it's it's gonna look like this but it, it won't for the final product. I do prefer making uh the base like using the the actual Funko Pop custom base but we don't have that option right now, so I'm, I'm forced to take one that's already been <clears throat> made. But this, this, this step will take some trial and errors, but rolling the clay out and then cutting out the pieces you want will get you the proper hair and decals. So I finished the hair I'll have to smooth it out a bit later. Uh, I made it a bit like the wind is blowing this way, so it'd be more like dynamic. I also put in a book. She's hugging right here. You can you can move the arms in a direction you want. And then I, d I just rolled the clay and turned it into a rectangle. We can we can color it later. And so the arm you you could put it in a position you want, hair and everything. It has to match her expression. Smooth out a bit, make the make the sleeves look more realistic, so they are uneven. And the hair neckline right here. So I'll see the hoodie is a bit. There we go. Here too, just. Uh, be a bit smoothed out. If you want to add like a tuft of hair here, you can. If you want to put on a hat or something, a beanie, some top hat, you can also make it out of clay. A bow or something. I'll oh, see. There's a there's a hole here, so we'll have to put in more clay. There we go. I'm 
I'm not gonna put decals on the hands like I said before, like fingers, and that's not really my specialty. This is my style. So if you'd like to, you can always do that. But here, here it is. Now, just for this one, I'm gonna make a dog. And I'm gonna put it at her feet. Sometimes I, I put them so they, they hold the dog, but this one will be right here. Like, you don't wanna make it too big. You don't wanna make it too small. Make it look like cute. You know, sometimes you could put it separately, but specifically I want it to be stuck to, to her, so. Now we're just gonna make like a ball. Think of how big you want it. So, it's a little bit too big. The oval. When it's standing. Um, it's too big still. Don't make it oversized. <laughs> Unless it's like a pet dragon or something. This looks just about it. So now, it's like a head and a body. Move we'll like that. Make sure the head is not too small or too big. It's too small. Down. Hmm. hmm, the body might be a bit too big. This is full of try and error. You can always put a toothpick here so the head doesn't fall off. I think I'm good. Depends on what clay you use. Hmm. Make sure it's not too big. So whether I want it here or there, right here. Hmm. It's sitting in position. Unless you want it to stand. It's entirely up to you. So it looks like I'm going to have to make a new snout. Oh. Make sure you have a picture to reference too. That's very helpful. Kind of big. <laughs> That's the Funko Pop style. Has a big head and a small body, but it's cute. I think I'll attach it like that. Let's make a few adjustments.
So trying to adjust the dog. I think this is good. Let me know. I might have to attach the dog with a toothpick just so it won't fall in the baking process. Otherwise, I think it's ready. So now we're gonna have to put this in the oven for 360 degrees and for 20 minutes. Just depends on how many clay layers there are. You might have to need more, but make sure all parts are attached and the same, it's the, in the right position you want. And so put it on a baking sheet and on a plate before you put it in. And I'll see you in a few minutes. While the Funko Pop is baking, I always like to start on the box. So for the box, you'll, you'll need construction paper because it's all flimsy and not that thick. And you have color pencils and a black pen. It has to be really good so it won't smudge. And a pencil so you could sketch it first before you outline it and color it. And an eraser so you can erase all the pencil marking. This is an example of my box. So I would, I would put the paper on and then trace out how much space I have, the whole box, and then color it. Just like for this one, I would trace the, the picture that it had here on the box and put in my own. And just for every side, and I could choose whatever I want to draw on it as, and the top too. And this is number 18. I always number my Funko Pops. I'm on 26 right now. This is the, the one I'm making is number 26. I sometimes do the inside too, just to, to make it like a memory for the person I'm making it for. You can choose whatever you want to draw on it. And it's all up to you. This, this is a very creative project. So it came out really well. And now we're going to paint it. So after it has cooled down, we're going to paint it with matte white paint, just for the base, and then we can color the rest. You could just use a big brush for the beginning. Make sure it has cooled down first before you paint it. Make sure to cover everything. First just use the big brush and then you can get to the edges, the crevices, with a smaller one. Make sure it doesn't have any drip marks, just so it can be smooth. Do one side first and then wait for it to dry and then do the next. Matte white paint is really is a really good base for all the other colors. Just be careful so the tongue doesn't snap off. If anything does snap off, then you could just glue it back. Now we can use the smaller brush to get it all 
wall painting. Looks like this is all painted. Now we're gonna have to wait for this to dry. Now that it is finished, so now we're gonna have to start painting. So we have to decide what colors we want our clothing to be, the face, the, the hair, and I have it all ready. So let's start. So now we have the blue paint. I'm going to color the pants first, since I'm going to be layering the paint. It has to be the bottom. Okay. It's fine if you get it on like the top part where it's not supposed to be or on, the, on other stuff besides the pants because then you could just paint it over when it's dry. Make sure not to leave any white spots. You also have to make sure the white paint is all dry before you start. This is a very relaxing project to do on a on a on a school break. Make sure the paint is consistent so there aren't any light blue spots here. There we go. Those are the pants. Now we're now while that dries, we can do some other part, like the hair. I think we'll do the hair next. You have to wash the paintbrush, of course, in between. Make sure it's dry. Also, make sure you have enough paint. Make sure to get the stuff under this. Oh, looks like we got all the hair. And now I have to go wash the neck, the, the brush. Let's figure out how to get this down somehow. I think I'm gonna have to hold it up while it dries. The hair. And now that the paint pants have dried, I can paint the shoes. I'm gonna add decals later so it could be more detailed. But for now, it's just the base. Make it kind of look realistic. I'm gonna paint one more time blue here just so the pants would like overlap the shoes so it would look more realistic.
Once again, I'm using matte paint because if you're holding it here, it won't get on your fingers or damage. Acrylic will do that. And you'll have to repaint it too many times. Looks like we got this down. I'm gonna wait once the hair dries to get to the hoodie. The dog I'll do last. Now we are gonna do the sweater. Moments, please. I can't open this without. Yes, there we go. Trying not to get on the hair. I painted all the base coats off camera, so now we're gonna do the details. So, first, you have to look at your references of course you want it as detailed as possible let's start with the white <laughs> all right make sure not to get it on anything else but the hoodie And see, these are kind of mm, thin tips would have been better, but <laughs> why are you laughing? <laughs> what? Make sure to look at your reference. Mm, looks like I'll do pink next. These paint markers, you first have to get the paint flowing. I like these because they dry really fast. That's really helpful. Make sure it doesn't drip. might have to take a while for it to flow if you haven't used it in a while. All right, there we go. Pink again and some flowers. And see, I also did the eyes off camera. Basically, all you do with these eyes is you find the bumps of the original base of the Funko Pop. You just paint it on like circles, unless you want it a um, different shape. Go ahead. So the eyebrows indicate expression. I might add a smile or something, but for now, we're doing the hoodie. No diamonds. I always add the sparkly markers last because then I can blend them in better with the other details.
really bad side to these markers is that they're really the tips are kind of fat cut so they don't go into the crannies but it'll work a little bit. Yeah, I think that's good. That's all. The final product. I think it came out pretty nicely. We have two more. Momo said later. <laughs> no, do it when I'm not doing like talking. This is good background noise. Go, go, go. All right, so now all we have to do is the bandana and the torn jeans. Now, I think we'll do the dog first. All right, let's start. It's like, let's do the blue first. There we go. So let's start the dog's bandana. First, I'm gonna do the blue. As you can see, the cameraman is kind of bored. Now let's start with the red stripes. Go wash this now. So now we're gonna start the red. It's gonna be a bit wavy. At the end, it should look like the American flag. It's gonna be a river of spit after we're done. <laughs> Don't make Michael record. All right, we're done with our red. So now we're going to wait for this to dry. For now, we can just do the jeans. We have to make them look torn. I, I have never done this before, but we'll try it.
have the white paint on our paintbrush already. We can also fix some white paint that's been either painted over or Michael, please. That's better. here to make it look like it's ripped to the skin. First we have to wait for it to dry. Where is it? I asked you to wash it. Next time I'm washing it myself. All right while we're at it let's add the final details to the dog. you guys are enjoying the beatboxing in the background. to wait it to dry again. This is basically painting in a nutshell. You just have to wait for everything to dry because then it might smudge. 
so it might take like a few minutes. That's it. Now we're gonna do the stars and finish up the jeans. take all the paint away because we are finished oh wait never mind we still need the uh i forgot the the shiny part never mind false alarm Aww. all right we can start with the black shiny paint i wanted to make the dog's nose a bit shiny what is that There we go. Just little dabs here and there. <clears throat> what else? Just pause. There we go. It's like a shiny as I was having. So cute. Next, I guess we could do the shiny pink for like a little bit of the sweater, just here and there, not too. made the front of the box. This is how it's gonna look like. I basically just cut out a piece of paper, drew on it, has to match of course the Funko Pop itself because this is where she will be kept. And I'm gonna also make a background and the size. I usually put like memories and stuff I had with this person. And just like, just like this one, basically, so I'll just add this, you know, just cover it all. And and the side, just just every side. And then of course the front. And it has to have some kind of theme. Like for this one it's like purple and flowers. For this one's like clouds and, and palm trees, you know. Because that's my favorite. So I, I just, because the sweater was purple, I just wanted it to all match. It's usually what I go for. Just make sure not to put on too much glue or else it will go through and it will make the colors darker. I've done that mistake plenty of times. And now I think it's all ready for varnish. Let's gloss. Actually it's varnish, but it's like gloss. It's better than gloss. Alright, put it all together. Alright, let's, let's do this paintbrush. This varnish is really good. I recommend it for anything. Make sure there are no drip marks. This protects the paint from any damage. Okay. 
You just want to cover it all over with this stuff. This is like gold. Oh, that smudge. See what I mean? I'll do the hair first since it's brown. We are finished! We finally varnished and painted every single inch of this Funko Pop. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.